All right, this is 8-2 inverse trig functions. Um, so just like any mathematical operation, um, sine, cosine, and tangent each have an inverse. Um, so just like multiplying and dividing are opposite, adding and subtracting are opposite, um, each of these trig functions have um, essentially undo functions. Um, and we just call them sine inverse, cosine inverse. Um, they're written with a little negative one um, power, but we just say sine inverse. Um, you'll find each of these on your calculator. Usually you hit second and then they appear, um, then they're like above the sine, cosine, and tangent buttons that you've been using already. Um, so you have access to those on a calculator. Um, all they do is just undo what sine, cosine, and tangent do. Um, so what we can use them for is actually finding missing angles instead of missing sides. Um, so the first step of doing problems like these are really close to what we've already done. Um, we're looking at a reference angle and we're deciding, um, we're deciding what trig function to use depending on what sides we're dealing with. So in this triangle, we have a reference angle on the bottom left and then across from that is the opposite side and this is the adjacent side. Um, meaning that then the only trig function that will be helpful to us is tangent, which deals with opposite and adjacent. So then we write this function. Um, we don't know what the angle is, so we end up with tangent of just theta, that's a variable, equals opposite over adjacent. So 3 over 8. Um, in order to find out what theta is, we need, we need to be able to undo tangent, because theta is inside of tangent right now. Um, so I'm going to write this algebra step um, only on this problem because um, for most of them, the, this step is kind of inferred. Um, but what we're really doing is we're taking tangent inverse of both sides of our equation. Um, on this side, we have tangent inverse of tangent, which is like uh, undoing. And then on this side, we have tangent inverse of 3 eighths. 3 eighths. <coughs> so over here, tangent and tangent inverse um, undo each other, and we're left with only tangent. Um, on the other side, we have tangent inverse of a fraction, 3 eighths. Um, and this is something that you can plug into a calculator. Um, let's draw a little calculator there so we know what we're doing. So we're calculating that, and that gives us a value of 20... 0.56, and the units here are degrees because we are dealing with, um, this is a missing angle, right? So our angle is 20.56 degrees. Um, and essentially that's the whole thing. Um, we just use these inverse, uh, inverse trig functions to undo, um, undo our trig functions in order to find missing side, or angles in the triangle. So we have a bunch of practice problems on the next page. Um, I will do a couple of them with you. Um, so this first one, we have a reference angle in the bottom left-hand corner, um, but this time we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse, um, which means that we need to use sine. And our equation should say sine of theta is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And then in order to undo sine, we would have to take sine inverse of both sides, which ends up just um, undoing the sine. And then on the other side, we have sine inverse of 6 tenths, which spits out a value of 36.87 when you type it into a calculator. Um, number two, we have the opposite side to our reference angle is here. And then this side is the adjacent, so we need to be using tangent. So we have tangent of our unknown angle is equal to 8 over 6. Um, and then when we take tangent inverse of both sides, we end up with tangent inverse of 8 sixths, um, which gives us a value, if we plug it into a calculator, of 53.13 degrees. One more, we have a reference angle in the upper corner. And so um, this is the adjacent side, and this is the hypotenuse. Um, so we should be using cosine here. So we have cosine of theta is equal to 3 over 5. And then we take cosine inverse of both sides. 
um, which again gives us a value of 53.13. Um, good, okay, so now we have a couple of word problems here. The same math is involved, but now we're just uh, putting more words and we have to draw our own triangle. So number four says the ladder manufacturers recommend that their ladders not be used at any angle of elevation larger than 60 degrees. If Jeff has planted the base of the ladder four and a half feet from the wall, so here's our triangle. Um, and this bit is our ladder. Try to get that total correct for me. It's not working. Um, okay, so our ladder over here is um, against a wall, and it's four and a half feet from the wall. Um, and the ladder is extended to be seven feet long, so the ladder is seven feet long. Um, the angle of elevation here is going to be this angle. Remember, angle of elevation is an angle that's above a horizontal line. Um, so we're wondering, is this angle bigger than 60 degrees? Um, so on this one, we should be using um, cosine because it's adjacent and hypotenuse. So we'll do cosine of our unknown angle is equal to um, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Um, and then we just invert cosine. So then we have four, oops, we have cosine inverse of 4.5 over 7, um, which gives us a value of 49.99 degrees. Um, so yes, it is within the recommendations. Perfect. Um, and then number five, we have, uh, as a part of a woodworking project, Alice needs to make a triangular base against a vertical piece of wood. The base of the brace is going to be two and a half feet from the base of the vertical board. So this is two and a half. Um, and the board is three feet long. So we have three feet here. Um, what angle should she cut the top of the board so it will fit flush against the vertical surface? Um, so we're wondering about this angle. What angle should we cut that? Um, and so from that angle, we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse there. So we have sine of theta is equal to two and a half over three. Um, we take the sine inverse and we get two and a half over three and we get 56.44 degrees. Um, so that's the angle she needs to cut the, the board in order for it to fit flush. Um, so that's 8-2, that's inverse trade function. So let me know if you have any questions.